Hello everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name is Amanda and in today's video we are going to be looking at the rubber colour base application and how to apply this for strong nails and we're also going to be doing a little bit of stamping with gel polish and chromes. So I really hope you all enjoy watching. Starting off, I am working on a practice hand, so I don't have any prep to do. However, I will leave a dedicated prep video in the description box below. So do check that out if you're looking on how to prep the natural nails ready for your base coat. Now I'm using the rubber colored base coat in number five, and I'm also gonna be using the Kiki London detail brush to get a nice neat cuticle line. So what I've done is I've popped down a little bit of that RB05 on my Kiki London nail art palette and then I'm just taking a small amount of it and I'm using the detail brush to get really close to that cuticle line. Now whether you're a beginner or an advanced nail tech you work on so many different nail beds that sometimes it can be tricky to get close to the cuticle area with your bottle brush especially when you're working with ever so slightly thicker products like the rubber base coat or your builder gel. So what I like to do is take that detail brush and use that to get a nice neat cuticle line first and then I'll switch to the bottle brush and continue the nail. Now with the bottle brush, I still like to try and get as close as I can to that cuticle line, but I haven't got to stress too much because I've done a lot of the work with the detail brush. This way, it just makes it a little bit easier to get that really nice, neat, flush cuticle without having to put too much work in. You might think that it's taking you longer, but it's actually quicker, in my opinion anyway. Now with my first coat of the rubber color base or any base coat that I use, I like to really scrub it into the nail. So obviously I'm working on a practice hand, so it's a little bit different, but I like to just really take a thin layer of it and a small amount of it, especially if I'm gonna be doing two coats like in this video today, and just really work that into the natural nail plate. This gives you a really good adhesion to the nail. And the great thing, about the rubber base coat system is is designed for weak and brittle nails it gives your nails a bit of strength especially if you are someone like a nail biter or if you're hard on your nails it will help strengthen them now with the colored rubber bases, you could either do one coat of these and then come in with your gel polish color on top, just like you would a regular base coat, or you can use two coats of them and use them for their color as well which is similar to what I'm going to be doing in today's video. But in today's video, video, I'm just gonna be applying that second coat ever so slightly thicker. And we're gonna be using it how I use it anyway, to show you guys to give a little bit of extra strength to the natural nails. If you don't wanna go as far as a builder gel overlay, then this is kind of like a good in-between. So I'm still just coming in with that first coat of color. You will also see that now and then I might come back in with the detail brush, just say if I feel as though I haven't got as close as I could. And when I'm taking that base coat on the detail brush, I do kind of brush it in, but I also use round circular motions as well. Now it might look as though this makes the product go on a little bit uneven, but one of the amazing things about this product is it self levels absolutely beautifully. So especially when you're working on small nails, like the little finger here a lot of the time the natural nail bed will be a lot smaller and it can be trickier to get a neater application on those so this is where I find my detail brush comes in handy I'll bring it right down of those side walls as well so you don't necessarily have to just use it for getting a neat cuticle line you could come right down the side walls with it as well and as you can see here I've wiped off a lot of product from my brush and it still has loads on it so just wiping off on the sides will still leave your bristles fully coated in product. This way you're able to get that nice thin application and allow the brush to fan out and do some of the work for you as well. If you apply a small amount of pressure, the brush will fan out and this really helps you get a nice neat cuticle line. And then I do just like to come over it a few times just so I'm kind of working up, getting closer and closer to that sidewall to get that nice neat line. Once we've done our first coat of color, we're gonna pop this in to cure for 30 seconds. And this is what one coat of RB05 looks like. It's a really nice natural pink. Now I'm showing you for the second coat, I've completely wiped off one side of the bottle brush. And then on the other side, I've wiped off half of it, leaving a small ball of gel at the tip of that bottle brush. And with this ball of gel, I'm kind of gonna float it on. 
So I'm not scrubbing it in or working it in like I was on that first coat of color. I'm kind of just keeping the product at the very tip of the nail, tip of the brush, sorry, and working it onto the nail. And then I've just come in with a little bit more here and I focused applying that down the center of the nail. And then I've just evened it out down those side walls. On the second coat here, I forgot to come in first of all with my detail brush and do my cuticle area first. So I'm just coming in and getting a little bit closer with the detail brush just because I forgot to do it first of all and I want to make sure I've got that nice neat flush cuticle on the second coat as well. Now doing your second coat like this ever so slightly thicker, it's not too thick that it's going to have curing issues, it's just only slightly thicker because you're floating it on rather than painting or scrubbing it on and on the natural now what this does is it creates a really nice natural apex just an ever so slight apex i'm not talking about the kind of apex that you build up when you're doing extensions just a natural following like the natural apex that your natural nails will already have it's a little bit tricky to explain but this just adds that little bit of strength to the nails and i find it brilliant if you don't want to go like i said as far as doing a builder gel overlay you might have clients who are not ready to go for builder gel or you might not even offer builder gel in your salon so this is a great alternative and i find i wear it this way the rubber base coat on my nails a lot of the time and i find it works wonders especially with the nude shades that are available in the rubber color base because there is just a nude for everyone and there's even two shades that have shimmers no sorry three shades that have shimmers to them as well and it's just a quick and easy way of doing a nice natural manicure but also adding strength to the nails as well so let's talk second coat like i said i'm coming in exactly the same as the first coat when it comes to the detail brush so i'm loading up my brush again a nice neat cuticle line and then i like to feather it down a little bit as well just so it's not going to be too uneven and it's going to blend in bringing it down those side walls as well. And another brush that I always have to hand whenever I'm doing any kind of application with gel polish, builder gel, or the rubber base system is my angled nail art brush. And I use this for any cleanup. So even though you're working with a smaller brush, you might still accidentally touch the skin or cuticles. So I'll have that angled nail art brush there with just a little bit of alcohol on it. And this is firm enough that you can get right down in those side walls and around that cuticle area and clean up any product that's touched the skin that you don't want to. And as long as you clean it off before curing, it will come off effortlessly. So just following those same steps and routine of taking a small ball of gel just at the very tip of that bottle brush, basically we're just working it down the center part of the nail as that's where your natural nails apex is it's in that back third just away from the cuticle area and you want it to run down at the center of the nail as this is where you want that little tiny bit of thickness when i say thickness i really don't i don't mean as thick as a builder gel overlay thickness kind of somewhere in between a base coat and a builder gel overlay but honestly, I find this brilliant for my own nails. I've got very weak nails and I find this brilliant for adding that little bit of extra strength to them when I don't want to go the full way and doing a builder gel overlay. And how beautiful is this color as well? This RBO5 and RBO6 are my two favorite shades in the rubber base system before wearing on their own. The two nudie pinks with shimmers are very, very pretty as well if you want a more shimmery effect. So that's that cured. Now we've done our second coat and this is another step that's kind of optional, but I really like to do it, especially when I've applied my second coat slightly thicker. I like to come in and gently buff over them just to make sure they are super smooth. So I wipe over the nails first of all with an alcohol wipe to remove any of that tacky inhibition layer. And then taking just the 180 grit side of the buffer, I'm very, very gently just gonna buff over the surface of the nails. And if you have got any area that's not fully self-leveled or is just a little bit uneven, this just fixes that. And you can really see the difference. So off camera, I've done the remaining three nails and they look super, super smooth. Now at this point, you could just come in, top coat the nails or even pop a gel polish shade over the top still if you wanted to. And you could send your client or yourself off on the way with a nice fresh manicure. I wanna come in and do a little bit of nail art. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, we are gonna be doing some chrome stamping with 
gel polish. We're going to be doing our stamping all with our gel polish. But before we get to that part, I do want to add a little bit of colour to the nails. So I'm taking a vanilla latte, olive mint and my striped liner brush. And we're kind of going to just draw on some wavy tips just on the middle and the ring finger. So I'm taking my strap liner brush, I'm loading it up with a little bit of that vanilla latte, really working it through the bristles. A lot of the time when I finished doing any kind of nail art with my brush, I'll clean it off with an alcohol wipe and then I'll run it through a little bit of clear gel. And then I'll pop the lid back on and put it away. So this means when you next use it, you'll see that I was really having to work it through. That's because it's had a little bit of clear gel on there, which keeps it kind of like conditioned, if that makes sense. I find this way it keeps my nail brushes in a tip top condition. So that's why I was just working it through there. That's going to pull any of that clear gel off and take on the vanilla latte. And then as you can see, I've just created a bumpy, I don't want to say French tip, it's more of an abstract design and just going across the tip of the nail. So we're going to do it very similar again with the olive mint, but I want the longer side to go down the other side of the nail, kind of so it frames both the nails together. And then I'm just filling this in. And this is really easy to do because you're not having to worry about getting a perfect crisp French or a perfect crisp straight line. Just keep your waves nice and neat, which is very simple to do with the stripe liner brush. And then I like to fill in the tip of the nail using that same stripe liner brush as well, just so I can get a nice neat application along the tip and close to those side walls. Now I am gonna do two coats of these colors, just because with the olive mint there, you see where it's going over a darker pink base, it does look a little bit sheer. And I really want these two colors to stand out and pop in this kind of design. So we're gonna come in and do the exact same again to create our second coat. And the second coat is always a lot easier to do because you've just got to follow the line on the first coat. I like to take a little bit of extra time and get my line as neat and as crisp as possible on that first coat. So then when it comes to the second coat, I know I've just got to follow what I've done on the first coat and it's a lot easier. And again, I'm just gonna make sure I've loaded up my stripe liner brush with enough gel polish that I can color in the rest of that tip as well. And you can see coming in and adding that second coat really makes the color pop, especially on the olive mint as well. Vanilla Latte is a nice bright creamy white shade so naturally it pops quite a lot over a pink base anyway but the Olive Mint has that more it's got a little bit of a grey undertone to it so it doesn't pop as much over a pink base but once you come in and add that second coat I feel as though it really does. This is actually one of my all time favourite shades especially for this time of year as well. Like if you're not yet ready to go full on spring nails and bring out the pastels and the yellows and the pinks, Olive Mint is like a beautiful transitional colour from winter to spring. Now because we're coming in and doing a stamping with chrome on top i want to make sure that i've got a super matte surface so that my chrome is only going to stick to the image i stamp down with my gel polish so before we move on to any stamping or any chrome nail art i'm going to come in with the no wipe matte top coat and i'm going to matte both matte top coat both of these nails now the base where we've done the rb05 is already quite matte because we've buffed it and wiped it with alcohol but those tips have your tacky inhibition layer from the colored gel polishes and with chrome it will stick to anything that's got any kind of tack so it's best to just come in first of all with a matte top coat and have a super matte surface then i've chosen my stamping plate and i'm taking the kiki london black heart this black is super pigmented in one coat so it's perfect for stamping with gel polish if you are attempting any kind of gel polish stamping you need to ideally use a color that you're able to use in one coat because you're not going to be able to do two coats of it and as you can see there I stamped down exactly the same way as I would with stamping polish but I've just used a gel polish then you've popped that into cure and you will need a second older stamper that you can apply your chrome powder to so I've taken an older stamper and I'm just placing on a generous amount of chrome and then we're literally gonna tap this on to that cured stamped image really don't worry about it going all over the nail it is only going to stick to where we stamped our gel polish then i'm going to take my kiki london dust brush this is nice and soft and gentle so it gently removes all of that chrome without disturbing the image or pulling the chrome off the image as you can see there it's removed it all from the nail plate but it stayed nicely on that little star that we've stamped down 
And then I swapped my Angle Nail Art brush and a little bit of alcohol just to clean up around the area. Now to clean the gel polish off your stamper, I like to take a lint roller and just run over it a few times. So just bounce it on a couple of times and it will pull that gel polish off your stamper. Then we're gonna do the exact same again. So a small amount of black heart, scraped it across the image. I've taken my stamper, just gently rolled it across and then we're gonna press down. The only difference I would probably say is I don't press down as hard with the gel polish as what I do with stamping polish. So I just do a light press and it goes on effortlessly. It's a little bit different to stamping polish because stamping polish dries quickly. So that's why I feel like with stamping polish, I do quite a firm rub. Whereas when I'm stamping with the gel polish, I just do like a quick bounce on and off the nail. And as you see, it's stamped on beautifully. I haven't tested stamping with too many colors just yet of the gel polish range. I've mainly just used, oh, I've used black heart a couple of times. I have done another stamping video where I've used that. And I've also used Paradise Red as well, and that works beautifully. Now that we've finished off our chrome, I wanna add in a little bit of eggshell top coat to the tips of those nails, just because I was going for quite an abstract vibe. And I feel as though the eggshell top coat works brilliantly in any kind of abstract design because it saves you drawing on the black dots that you'll see in a lot of abstract designs. Now this is a top coat, so you can use it as you would a top coat to add the eggshell effect, but I'm just using it for nail art purposes here rather than a top coat. So I've popped a small amount of it down onto my palette and then taking my striped liner brush, I'm just applying this over those colored tips. So it doesn't necessarily matter if the clear part of the gel goes over the colored tips but you want to just make sure all those black dots or sorry black speckles would describe it better you want to make sure that they're all staying on the colored part of the nail tips so I'm just nudging this around getting it up into place making sure I'm happy with how all of those speckles are looking for example you don't want too many in one area and I don't want to completely cover up the tips as well but I really, really love this effect. This works brilliantly, in my opinion, for both Nala and full cover top coat designs. And then I'm also going to be using the 24K Flake top coat. So this is a, another top coat where it has particles in it. This time we've got beautiful gold flakes. And I'm going to be just using this one as a top coat. So when I'm applying this, I like to just come over the nail, not stress about where those gold flakes are going, just coat the entire nail. This way you know that the clear gel that those gold flake particles are sitting in is a fully top coat in the nail. And then I'll just take the bottle brush and nudge those gold flakes around until I'm happy with how they're placed, wanting to make sure they're evenly distributed around the nail. Again, I use this top coat a lot for nail art purposes as well. I will reach for this in any kind of design where I would want to use some gold flake or things like that because it's a lot easier to use than gold leaf. So I use this a lot for nail art as well as just top coating. It's a brilliant product. So these two nails now, they are finished. They don't need to have another layer of top coat on them. This seals in your gel polish designs just the same as your regular top coat would. It just has those beautiful gold flake pieces in there. So I'm gonna pop those into cure. Now the middle and ring finger, we only applied that eggshell top coat to the tips of the nail. So the rest of the nail hasn't been top coated. So it's time to come in and top coat those. I opted to top coat with the No White Matte Top Coat because I'm really loving the combination of matte and glossy nails. However, you could do this with your glossy top coat if you would prefer. So I'm just going to come in and add a thin coat of this. You kind of want to float it over those stamped areas so that you don't pull off any of the chrome. And you might want to do this with a separate top coat because sometimes the chrome powder can contaminate your top coat brush. And then once I have finished applying this to both of those nails, we're gonna pop them in for their final cure. And that's this design finished. I absolutely loved how they turned out. The eggshell top coat gives off a little bit of an Easter vibe, but like I said, I love it for abstract designs. As always, all the products I've used are linked in the description box below. So do check that out. I hope you all have a wonderful weekend. Lots of love, take care, bye-bye.